Let's assume you want to make an operating system, but all the resources you find online are either obsolete or full of errors. To make an operating system, you need three things. First, being able to code in some high-level language, possibly C, we're gonna need C later on. Second, a general understanding of how things work in digital electronics. Like, you should know these things, and you will learn some other things. Uh, so watch some Benita videos, they're great, link in the description. And third, interest. We don't want this to be your seventh failure this week. It would be sad, disgraceful. Part 1. The CPU Assembly Booting The central processing unit is an integrated circuit, able to perform some predefined operations, receiving and sending data from and to other components of peripherals. This data is usually represented as, you know, ones and zeros, where one or high means there is electrical current flowing in a certain point of the circuit, and zero or low means there isn't. Here is a breadboard with an LED and a button. High, low, high, low. Incredible! But how can this represent data? Remember binary numbers? Remember like 27 is 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1, so binary 11011. Here are 8 LEDs, some of them are off. 00011011. Using these 8 digits or bits, we stored a number. We call 8 bits a byte. The operations performed by the CPU usually have to do with numbers. It can perform arithmetic operations between two numbers, bitwise logical operations, it can store a number in memory, but how can we control these operations? Here comes assembly. Assembly is a low-level programming language, which means, as you might know, that its instructions are very close to those directly understood by the CPU. Assembly code can be compiled to a binary file, which is the actual code the machine understands. Sometimes, like later on in this lesson, we will need to control some aspects of the binary file itself, so it's practical to represent this mess of ones and zeros with more intuitive hexadecimal numbers. Different CPUs use different instruction sets, so there is no universal bare metal programming language. The assembly language you're going to use is NASM x86 assembly, which is most likely to run on your CPU unless you're watching in like 2030 or 1970. What does it look like? Like this. This is an instruction. The first part is the instruction itself, usually two to five letters long, followed by parameters separated by commas. What does this thing do? Well, it moves the number 10 into AX. You can read it as move to AX10, you sound a bit like Yoda, but it's doable. What's AX? It is a register. Registers are particular parts of the CPU that store some data. Some of them are used for storing numbers and performing arithmetic logic operations, such as in SUM AX5. Some others are used for more specific tasks. The main ones we'll care about for now are AX, BX, CX and DX. These are 16-bit registers, each of which is divided in two 8-bit halves. AX is divided in AL, the low part of the AX register, and AH, the high one, BX is divided in BL and BH and so on. If the notion of register isn't that clear as of now, don't you worry, it will be later when we'll use them. In fact, enough for the introduction, let's talk about the real stuff. How do you get the OS to start up? When you turn on a computer, the first thing it does is it looks for an operating system. How does it know where the beginning of the operating system is located in memory? It looks for a part of the memory called the boot sector. The boot sector usually is the first sector of a bootable drive which can be a USB or a floppy disk, whatever. In general, the boot sector is recognized because it is a 512 bytes long piece of binary code that ends with the hexadecimal number 55AA. Can we make one? Yes! So here we are, coding an OS. The beginning of an exciting journey. The first program we will run will not be that exciting, but it's certainly a start. Our goal is to make a simple boot sector. 512 byte long piece of binary code that ends with the hexadecimal number 55AA. We might do that by hand if we were stupid enough, but fortunately we are not. Let me first introduce the simple concept of labels and jumps. Assembly code is executed line by line, and some lines can contain a label, followed by a column. You can jump to a label by using the JMP instruction. Note that you can skip lines or make loops. 
Another way to make a loop is to jump to the current memory address, represented by the dollar sign. We will keep this for now, because what we want to do is let the CPU do something forever. To make the code bootable, we need to add these two lines. Our first line is not 512 bytes long. To make it so, we need to add a bunch of zeros before the final two booting numbers. The times instruction repeats an action a certain number of times. In this case, the instruction is db0, which stands for define byte 0. And this is the number of times we want to execute it. The two dollar signs represent the beginning of the current sections, so this is the length of the previous code. Since we need the code to be 512 bytes long, we will need to add 510 minus the length of the previous code to get to 510, which adds up to 512 when we add the two final numbers, 55 and AA. Let's save this. What we want to do with this file is make a bootable binary out of this. In the video description you'll find a simple explanation of how to get the necessary software. What you will need is NASM and some virtual machine like VirtualBox, or in my case QMU. This command creates the binary file, and this one runs the emulator. If you can read booting from hard disk, that means it's working. Try and change the final number and see what happens, spoiler, it won't work. In the next episode we'll learn how to print and input strings using BIOS routines. For dubs and suggestions I'll be glad to help in the comment section. Goodbye!